Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to give you guys a bit of an update uh, on the stuff going on in Virginia. And guys, it's looking pretty bad. So buckle in, stick with us on this. We really want to make sure that our viewers are informed of what's going on. And it involves SB 16 and SB 64, uh, two extremely, extremely tyrannical bills that are getting pushed through in Virginia. And right now, it's a it's a Democrat-controlled House, Senate, uh, governorship. Everything is pretty much uh, we got Democrats at the wheel in Virginia. Now, there's some more far-reaching things that we need to discuss in this video that I feel are implications to this entire thing, like sort of the cause and effect to why it happened that I feel are really important to mention. But also, people need to understand just how dangerous this really is that's going on. I mean, this is a far-reaching set of legislation that basically aims to make every Virginian, Virginian, Virginians, Virginians, Virginians. every Virginian citizen, a felon overnight. And, and that's some serious stuff. We're talking five years in prison, lose your gun rights. Very, very serious stuff. I mean, not something to be taken lightly. And it's going up for a vote in January. Now, I know right now we're here at the beginning of December, and it's still kind of early to speculate, but it's pretty much theorized that these things are going to be swept on through and brushed right on through. And uh, it's going to go through, okay? We, we, <laughs> yeah. we know that because... These people are bought off by Bloomberg, and uh, we are going to get into these bills, but I feel like it's important to understand the relevance of this, okay? So Bloomberg donated $2.5 million to put these Democrats in office, and this was right in the NRA's backyard, okay? Mm -hmm. The NRA spent about $300,000 back in people. So all this lobbying and all this money, it's all about money, right? All these folks spent all this money to try to get these people put in office. And the whole idea is, all right, well, we're going we're gonna to donate this money to put you in office, but when you get in office, you're going to do something for me, right? That's the whole idea. Whether anybody will admit it or not, that's what all this is, is just political favoritism, right? If I spend my money on you, well, then when you get in office, you're going to owe me a favor or two. And that's exactly what happened. Bloomberg spent all this money to try to get these Democrats in office at the tune of what? 15, 16 seats. Mm -hmm. Bam. Done. House, Senate, Governor. We got you, right? And, of course, he's coming to collect. Yep. And that's what this is all about. This is really Bloomberg and, and his wishes and every town for gun safety's wishes, not the people of Virginia. And that's the issue. So there is no electoral college at a state level. It's pretty much a popular vote, right? No matter where those votes come from, if you possess a popular vote, then you win the election. It doesn't take into account all of the counties that don't want to put up with your bullcrap. And it's not based on population densities. The way Electoral College works at the federal level, let's just say, obviously, when we have a presidential election, you hear the Democrats complain about the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. The reason they complain about it is because they run all the giant population centers are primarily Democrat. When you look at a map, right, of where all of the, you know, which places are red and which places are blue, most of the blue counties and jurisdictions are in the large cities. Mm -hmm. And then all of the outside areas are red, right? We're all red-blooded folks just trying to live life and do our thing and live free. And then when you get into large population centers, they vote blue. I don't know why that is. It's confusing. I don't understand it. I can't wrap my mind around it no matter how I look at it. But that's just how it is. And unfortunately, a lot of those cities also have a heck of a lot of people. So if the large cities... Here's the danger of these state-level elections when it comes to the lack of an electoral college. When you make something strictly just a, you know, popularity contest, well, then what happens is all the people in the city can just go, well, there's a lot of us and there's not a lot of you. All right, well, we want gun control, even though we know that the vast majority of people don't want it, just because there's a lot of us in one area that we get the ability to tell you all what time it is. And that's what happened in Virginia. Yeah. Folks sat on their hands, okay, and they assume that it would never happen in Virginia. Oh, that'll never happen in Virginia. This is Virginia, right? The state flag has a picture of a guy <laughs> stepping on a dead tyrant's neck with a crown knocked off his head. I mean, come on. It's the state of Virginia. We're talking Virginia. How? Oh, my gosh. It's just... So I really wanted to take just a moment to discuss the ins and outs of how this happened and we let it happen mm -hmm. it slipped right under our noses 
and I believe that it was a giant power play by Bloomberg just to punch the NRA right in the face because it's right in the NRA's backyard. What better way than to give the finger to the NRA than to have this happen in their backyard? Yeah. What does that say about the prowess of their organization? No matter what you might think about the NRA, they are right there in Fairfax, Virginia. So it was definitely a punch in the face to the the organization that represents gun owners. And I put that in, in quotes, okay? They say but they do. It's The NRA is what's in the media all the time. GOA is in the media a lot, but the NRA is what every anti-gunner thinks is like the enemy, okay? But it was a, definitely a punch in the face. And we talked about you know the, the the tyranny coming to Virginia in a previous video, but the the text of the bills is out now, and the one that really con concerns me the most is the Senate Bill 64 about paramilitary activity. This this is nuts. I uh, want to mention something before you get started, ahead, go Chad. Ahead. So go ahead. this this Senate Bill 64 that he's discussing, from what I understand. Some areas of this bill have actually been a part of Virginia law since like the 70s already. Okay, so this is an amendment from what I understand to an existing piece of legislation. Now, I think it's one of those sort of um, kind of back alley things that maybe there are some things that are on the books that aren't enforced anymore. Okay, for instance, here in Georgia, back when, you know, the Civil War was going on, after the Civil War, Georgia passed a law that said that you could not be uh, you could not have more than, I think it was three males in, in sharing each other's company after a certain time of the evening. Yeah. There was rules against too many men getting together and talking, right? And I believe the law is still on the books. But, of course, no one enforces it because that's just dumb, right? It's been so long ago. That's just not a thing anymore. But after the war, they were worried that Confederate soldiers would get back together and form pockets of resistance and they wanted to make a law that would say, hey, you know, y'all y'all need to break that up because y'all might, you know, get together in a tavern, have some drinks and decide to take the feds on again. So that's what they were concerned about. So I think this this bill that they're talking 1987. about. 1987. 1987. Okay. So this, it's this not section, a new yeah. bill, but I believe it's one of those things that has not been enforced. It's one of those unwritten things that they don't really worry about. Mm. But now that the Democrats are in power, what they're trying to say is, hey, we know this exists, and we're going to enforce it. At least that's what they want you to think. So I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Continue. So they're 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 I'll shut um, up. <laughs> amending this this section. Okay, eighteen dash two four three three point two of the Code of Virginia is amended and reenacted as follows: paramilitary activity prohibited, and then the penalty: a person. All right, they scratched out shall be, and they replaced it with is guilty. A person is guilty of unlawful paramilitary activity punishable as a class 5 felony if he teaches or demonstrates to any person or any other person the use, application, or making of any firearm, explosive, or incendiary device or technique capable of causing injury or death to persons, knowing or having reason to know or intending that such training will be employed for use in or furtherance of a civil Disorder. All right. So what they're what they're trying to say is, if you train somebody on, or if you show somebody how to make something, or train somebody in the name of civil disobedience, which, I mean, is what it is. They're saying that all right, now you you fall, you, you're committing a felony. Well, okay. So say that you're a trainer and you just give classes, right? Well, you don't know why the people taking your class are taking the class, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's not fair. Uh, so. I don't know. I'm going to use someone like, I don't know, James Yeager, for instance. If you want to go up and take a James Yeager class, it's not like Yeager said, makes you fill out a form saying, you're not going to do nothing bad with this training. I mean, that's what the, it's the equivalent of. So I can see that if this thing does go through, a lot of trainers in Virginia, they're probably just going to have some bullcrap memo you fill Legal out. disclaimer. Yeah, and says... I will not use this training to blah, 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 and you have to sign. So it's some stupid legal bullcrap. It's still very troubling. Yeah. So, all right, civil disorder. I mean, okay, so we're learning how to use firearms or whatever. Okay, I'm teaching my child how to use firearms. I'm teaching him the true meaning of the Second Amendment, that it's not about hunting, right? It's about fighting back evil and tyrannical governments, yeah. such as what is happening in Virginia. So if you're teaching your child how to use a firearm for the true purpose of what the Second Amendment stands for, yeah. are you... Uh, furthering civil disorder at that point? 
Because at this point, you are guilty. The, the very nature of the Second Amendment is civil disorder. So that's really where the, the hang-up is with this. I mean, the Second Amendment is a constitutionally protected right. Like, it's in our Constitution. That's what I don't understand. Like, you know, any law that is repugnant to the Constitution is not a law. It's null and void. Right. Yep. It's null and void. I mean, there's been court cases already, Supreme Court cases that have occurred, where they've said mm -hmm. that it's the citizen's duty <laughs> to resist unconstitutional laws. There is the law, and there's something that acts under what's called the color of law. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but the color of law is the equivalent of somebody saying, Red flag laws, all right? Mm. That's the color of law because you're being stripped of due process. Take the guns first and then we'll worry about due process later. No, mm. that's not how it works. You can't take someone's property away without due process, mm -hmm. okay? So any law that says, anybody can write something down on a piece of paper and say this is the law, but enforcing that law, you're only acting under the color of law, not the constitutionality of law, not the law of the land. Yeah. All right, now one That's other, the issue here. One other thing that they've added to this section of the Virginia Code is number three. All right, so a person is guilty of unlawful paramilitary activity if they assemble with one or more persons with the intent of intimidating any person or group of persons by drilling, parading, or marching with any firearm, any explosive or incendiary device, or components or combination thereof. All right, so and they put what, that in bold letters, of course. Well, well this is <laughs> this is what's being changed. Okay, this right. is one of the amendments to this section of the code. Now, what I gather from this, all right, you're not happy. You can't put a you can't have an armed rally. <laughs> you can't have an armed rally. You can't go to the 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 Capitol building with rifles strung across your back as a show of force against some tyrannical law that might be coming down the pipeline. Otherwise, guess what? You'll all be guilty of a classified felony. <laughs> and the wording is so ambiguous that they can, of course, say, oh, well, we felt threat, even if there was no threat that existed. Oh, look, so it, remember, it has to say, with the intent of intimidating any person. So all yeah. they have to say is, oh, we felt intimidated. And all of a sudden, you're all felons. Well, because, you know, we don't have guns and you do. Right, well. because the Second Amendment is what it is, right? I mean, you have the right to peacefully assemble. All right. Armed, if you want. I mean, that's so, part of it. That's the stupid crap with, with 64. Now, 16 is your kind of general purpose, all right, assault weapons ban, all that kind of happy stuff, okay? But, Let's go over some of the high, well, low points. Yeah, some of the low points. But, so, um, uh, <clears throat> yeah. one, of the, one of the big things that they were mentioning was gun confiscation, but I've read the bill, and I can't find anything about, you know, the fervent gun confiscation, but there's nothing against it. There's nothing in there about grandfathering in certain assault firearms. It, it, is, a, assault firearms. it is an ambiguous wording that acts mm. under the color of law that can be taken, all right, this, this can be interpreted in a way that because there's no grandfather clause, you have to assume that it either will, can lead to mm -hmm. confiscation of some sort with no grandfathering clause in place. Now, the thing about like the 94 uh, crime bill, okay, it had a sunset clause. So that at least tells you, okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we're going to gather the data, you know, and if you think about it, as much as I disagree with the crime bill, of course, I, I hate it and it's bullcrap and it's a stain on our history. But with the crime bill, at least there was a bit of light at the end of the tunnel to where they could go. And I guarantee you the Democrats to this day hate it that it had a sunset clause because now you can look at that data and you can go, this was a bullcrap idea. It's a complete waste of time and taxpayer money. And it's a textbook example of why we should never do it again, right? So we have that to show for it, even though we had to give up 10 years of liberty. Remember, Dr. Martin Luther King said, a right delayed is a right denied. And that's not just a civil rights thing. Rights are rights. All rights are civil rights. Fire 2A... Being a firearms owner is a civil right. Yeah. It is a right. Self-preservation, self-defense, protecting your family. Those are all things that all people can embrace, no matter where they are, what walk of life they come from. Yep. It don't matter where you live, what color you are, what religion you are. The 2A two, two affects everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, It is a civil right. So it's totally appropriate to, to, uh, to quote Martin Luther King. Because that's... a. It, for those people that lived under crime bill in 94 for 10 freaking years, they were denied their rights mm. for that time. All right, so there's a couple things in here. Uh, one section is about carrying loaded shotguns in public, all right? So 
Uh, shotgun with a magazine that hold more than seven rounds and the longest ammunition was chambered. Uh, you can't carry it in certain public areas and they've pretty much just made that a blanket statement, okay? Except for law enforcement officers, licensed security guards, military personnel, all that kind of happy stuff. So, you know, all the cops. The jack, the jack boots that are going to enforce it. Well, we have to make sure they're they're covered. All right. So possession and transport of firearms by certain persons. All right. So this is one thing here. Um, yes, and guys, you need to read it. There's, there's a lot of verbiage in this. So that we can't cover in this video. All right. We'll get to what what qualifies as an assault firearm in a moment. But uh, there's a backdoor registration scheme in here uh, where if you go to purchase a firearm. What I'm gathering is that you will have to submit a background check to the state police on a, on, on a state level, okay? Currently, you go and buy a firearm at a dealer, you fill out a 4473, your personal information gets on there, you fill the form out, you do a background check or whatever. If you have a carry permit, it doesn't go through, whatever, okay? This, you have to submit more paperwork to the state, and then they will approve or disapprove you, and then they will maintain your records for 12 months. Of course they so, will. Oh, I guarantee it'd be more than 12 months. That, they've got a special filing cabinet for that. I guarantee you it ain't ever going to get thrown I mean, away. 4473s have to be maintained as well, but this is... The, the information that you have to provide for this is similar to what you would do when you're registering an NFA firearm. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, this is... This is pretty dumb. All right, before we go too Anyways. far down this rabbit hole, now look, this thing's far-reaching. You should not take this lightly. There's so many things in this that are very ambiguous and just downright tyrannical, right? We're not trying to downplay that at all, but I do want to provide a little light at the end of the tunnel on this subject. There are now, I think it's going on at the time of this filming of this video, about 15 counties in Virginia have voted to become 2A sanctuary counties. Mm -hmm. That's a great first step in the right direction. And I believe right now there's about double that number, about 30 more counties that have pending votes going on at the county level to determine, yes, we are a 2A sanctuary. And the whole idea is that the law enforcement officers and sheriffs are saying, look, we're not going to enforce state gun laws because it's unconstitutional. And basically, hey, we are a 2A sanctuary. We're gun owners here. We're gun people. This is what we're doing now. I will say, now, I live in Georgia. But I have a great relationship with my sheriff, and if he's watching, I, I hope he knows that uh, he is a great dude, okay? And he is very pro-gun. He is very pro-civilians owning guns. I mean, 110%. And look, guys, a sheriff is one of the most important elected officials in your community. Trust me, sheriffs are not a joke. Police can get fired and hired all day long. A sheriff is an elected position. That's a completely different animal when you're talking about law enforcement, right? An elected official is much more in tune with what the community needs, and they're also culpable, and they have to answer to the community when something goes on. Yep. What happens when some horrible incident happens in a given state or municipality, right? The sheriff makes a statement. Yep. The sheriff is the one that everybody looks at for answers, right? The sheriff is an important member of the community, and... Look, I get it. There's a heck of a lot of people. There's a lot of anti-police sentiment going on, right? And I get it because the police have been doing some dumb crap, all right? And it happens, right? But police, like men, all men and women, are fallible. We are all fallible as human beings. We all make mistakes. So no one's saying that a police should be higher than the greater good or even, even not capable of making mistakes. But we have to own those mistakes and learn from them and figure out how we're going to make the world a better place by working together. The point I'm making, and not to take away from this video, guys, try to have a relationship with your sheriff. At least have him on speed dial. You know, maybe offer to take him to lunch one day. Get to know him. Try to ask him questions. Ask him hard questions. Guys, they're elected officials, okay? Mm -hmm. They answer to you, okay? You elected them. You are the people. The, the, the sheriff answers to you. You are their constituents. It is a political position. Do not underplay that. It is important that these sheriffs show solidarity with the people. They are an elected official. They are an elected official who has to enforce the law and has mm -hmm. to dictate how laws are enforced. Standard operating procedures, mm -hmm. okay, all of those things. SOP can go a long way. In a 2A sanctuary county, the SOP can go, hey, none of this search and frisk bull crap. Mm -hmm. None of this, you know, all right, a guy's got gun stickers on his car, pull him over and give him crap about it. But... An anti-gun jurisdiction elects a sheriff, and the sheriff can go, you're dang right. 
You see somebody that fits this profile, you're gonna pull their butt over and you're gonna give them a hard time. And if they got guns, you're gonna give them an even harder time. That's SOP. Yep. SOP is SOP. And it varies from county to county. You drive across one county line, that sheriff might have a completely different view. You drive mm -hmm. in over in my county, over here, hey, we're all gun people. Hey, we're, we're you know, you're my people. You know, <laughs> the song of my people. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the thing. So it's very, very different. Okay, so people need oh to understand God. that, you know, don't alienate your sheriffs. Include them on these conversations so they can know what the people want, what they desire. And that's right. what's happening, okay? I'm sorry, but it, it needs to be talked about. It's important. It does. So I've read this thing twice <laughs> so far. It's just sorry. it's worse the second time. All right, let's see what, let's see what the anti-gunners in Virginia would like an assault firearm to mean. All right. A semi-automatic centerfire rifle that expels single or multiple projectiles by action of an explosion of a combustible material with a fixed magazine capacity in excess of 10 rounds. All right, fixed. All right, fixed magazine. All right. Number two, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that expels single or blah, 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 uh, with the ability detachable. to accept a detachable <laughs> magazine and has one of the following characteristics. A folding or telescoping stock. A pistol grip, a uh, pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the rifle. Hey, doggy! Come on. A thumb hole stock. Come on. A second hand <laughs> grip or a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. A bayonet mount. A grenade launcher. A flare launcher. A silencer. A flash suppressor. A muzzle brake. A muzzle compensator. Or a threaded barrel capable of accepting. A silencer. So a basically, a muzzle brake, a muzzle. <laughs> any semi-automatic. If it's semi-automatic, it's on this list. Um, I mean, that's just part of it. Let's see. A semi-automatic centerfire pistol that expels single or multiple projectiles, yakety yak, with a fixed magazine capacity in excess of 10 rounds. All right, so anything with a fixed magazine capacity that's semi automatic is out. All right, and look, AR pistols and AK pistols, yep. they're out. Yeah. Any, any pistol that has a magazine forward of the trigger guard mm -hmm. is on this list. Yep. And. A the, pistol cannot be over 50 ounces. Yep. The, That's uh, another way they're going to they're, they're gonna try to get you. No so, more Draco pistols, yep. no more AR pistols. A semi-automatic centerfire pistol uh, that has a second-hand grip, okay, the capacity to accept a magazine that attaches to the pistol outside of the outside pistol grip. Outside of the pistol grip. A shroud that is attached to or partially completely encircles the barrel, barrel shrouds. This is, the, you know, the shoulder things that go up. This is common assault weapons ban nomenclature here. Uh, manufactured weight of 50 ounces or more when the pistol is unloaded. And then Ralph Northam is going after suppressors, we know, again, because he talked about that over the summer. So I haven't seen any specific suppressor bills coming down the pipeline yet, but I'm sure they will be. And, you know, we'll do a video on them once they come down. But um, shotgun with a revolving cylinder. Hey, Danny. Let's see. That expels single or multiple projectiles. Semi-automatic shotgun. Uh, that has a folding and telescoping stock, a thumbhole stock, pistol grip. I mean, God almighty. And then, assault firearm includes any part or combination of parts designed or intended to convert, modify, or otherwise alter a firearm into an assault firearm. <laughs> it does not include a firearm that has been rendered permanently inoperable, antique firearms as defined in the other section, or a cure and relic as defined in the other section. All right, so, so oh, look, look, one more thing. Yeah, one more thing. Ahead. It says it is unlawful for a person to import, sell, or transfer. Okay, but possess is scratched out. So, like I said, it's it's kind of up in the air as far as grandfathering this stuff in. But you know, if if these bills go through, what's to stop an anti-gun Senate, House, and governorship from just saying, you know what, we're going to rewrite this, we're going to vote on it again, you're going to have to turn everything in. All right, so you know? allow me to play devil's advocate here, all right? Bye. So much amb uh, ambiguity. ambiguity. That's a big word for a redneck. <laughs> so much ambiguity here. So hey, here, here's the thing. So this isn't, this isn't about public safety, all right? And allow me to extrapolate here on what I'm talking about. So by saying, oh, well, if it's an antique or a muzzle loader, we're going we're gonna to allow that. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. This isn't about guns. This is only about certain types of guns. Mm -hmm. So it's not about public safety. It's about control. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with public safety. All these things they do, they try to do in the guise mm -hmm. of public safety. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, well, th this thing, that thing. This ain't got nothing to do with that. 
I mean, and, and look, I'm not saying, oh, take all the guns or make a big deal about every single gun there is. Come on, girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> however, the way to look at it is, well, if you're going to leave a grandfather clause in there for just certain types of guns, well, then why is it a thing to begin with at all? That shows you right now that, that there's a flaw in the entire argument mm -hmm. because this isn't about firearms in general and whether or not civilians should own firearms. They clearly are okay with you having guns, just not the guns they want you to have. So this isn't about that. So <laughs> when, is it, when is it ever about anything but control? They want their jackbooted thugs to walk around with ARs and all this uh, other mess, and they don't want you to have it. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And but they can't just make a bill saying that because it just sounds bad. Look, this is they got to always... make it sound like it's under the guise of public safety. Well, it is. it's not about public safety. It's about their safety. Yep. If it was about public safety, they wouldn't infringe on your rights to protect yourself using whatever tools you dang well please. That's the issue. This isn't about public safety. This is about <laughs> their safety, their perceived safety, because they feel that their lives are more important than your lives and that they should have the tools that they want at their disposal, but screw you. That's their logic. They can't just put that on a piece of paper and then turn it over and say, hey, sign this. No, they have to word it in some <laughs> off-kilter way that makes it sound like it's protecting you, but really it's just trying to protect them. Mm -hmm. All about public safety. Oh, their safety. Because you know, this <laughs> not is not yours. <laughs> this bill is going to prevent the next mass shooting. That's a fact, right? <laughs> right? Hey, you better not knock over my tripod. <laughs> She's trying to. Don't you think about it? Anyway, look, guys, this is serious. Okay, I know we, we're, we're we're being funny here, but not being funny. It it, it really mean, ticks me off. Okay, no. Because the thing is, is that what's happening in Virginia can be exploited in other states. Right? Look how close that we were to going completely blue in Georgia in the last election, okay? Stacey Abrams lost by like 20,000 votes. 20,000 votes, that could be swayed hey, by hey, Iraq look, veteran video. Look, let me let me explain something to y'all real quick. This just made me think of just it. Just saying, right. I mean, it's just weird to think about, like that you exist in a sphere where your influence could sway an election. Look, I mean, everybody wants to say, oh, well, that's not true, but it is true. Look, if I put out a video that gets 100,000 views about who I endorse or who I don't endorse, and guess what? That could sway an election. So that's why these people are in damage control mode trying to win over the social media realm. That's why all the social media companies are trying to uh, censor guys like me because they feel like I'm going to meddle in their freaking election. Look. In some small way. I mean, a tiny little way. But anyway. Two seconds. Sorry. Two seconds. Ah! Sorry, I'm mad. I'm, 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 I'm on coffee. If, if you think that your vote doesn't matter, okay? One vote. Oh, what's one vote? My city council election locally was lost by one vote. It was determined by one vote. One. One vote. One of the other folks running for city council won by one single vote. So when you say one vote doesn't matter, that's a bunch of bull crap. Yep. All right. Now, I get pissed off when I see the amount of voter turnout. Registered voters versus voter turnout for especially local elections, oh, it ticks me off because it's so minuscule. Like, folks just don't care. They don't care about the politics of their local area, but then they want to complain about everything that happens. But they have no part in it. They don't go to city council meetings. I'm sort you know? of, uh, I'm, I'm sort of uh, privy to the idea. I'm, I'm almost uh, wondering if voting's not working anymore. But, I mean, I'm not saying don't do your civic duty. You want to go vote? Go vote. I vote. But I also understand the big picture. And I understand that... I think there's going to be some voting there's, going. There might be some voting going on in Virginia, but it ain't going to be at the ballot box. There, there's some. There's some people getting bought out. I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. There, and and I have always had a relatively neutral um, sort of stance on lobbying. Right. Like I understand, you know, send somebody to Washington to lobby for your, you know, given efforts, but mm -hmm. it's really just bribery, right? I mean, let's just call it what it is. It's bribery, Danny. Right. You know, you get all these guys together and you pay them money. It, it, come on, it's bribery. If if Bloomberg goes in and spends two point five million dollars to try to change the outcome of an election, I'm sorry, that's bribery. I mean, you're you're bribing 
the citizens into believing it's, a, a, in, a, in an ideology look, that doesn't who, exist. It's who can put out. It's, it's a game of who can put out the most propaganda and win over the most voters. Right. You know, you're basically fooling people into voting one way or the other, and it works the same way on both sides of the aisle. It does. I'm, it does. Yeah. Look, it, it certainly and, is a, a yeah. Look, and I'm honestly, I'm sick of the whole system. I really am. You know, it just it makes me sick to even think about it. But the, 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 the Republicans and the Democrats both equally disgust me. And, and trust me, there, there's, there's guilty parties on both sides of the aisle, yep. okay? Uh, so if you think that we're trying to only just pander to one side, we're, we're certainly not, okay? I'd like to think that somebody like me really represents a group of people in this country that are just fed up with the hill, mm -hmm. okay? We want to live like we want to live. We want to be free. We want to own whatever guns we want. We want to teach our kids whatever we want. And we want to live our lives and do what we need to do and live free and mm -hmm. be free and be happy and pursue happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How much less complicated can that be, right? <laughs> to protect your life, to pursue happiness. Mm -hmm. The pursuit of happiness. Well, part of being happy is being alive, right? Well, part of being alive is keeping yourself alive. <laughs> well, that means that being a gun owner is part of my pursuit of happiness. Guns make me happy. I like shooting machine guns. I like riding in tanks. I like shooting belt-fed machine guns off the top of Humvees. I am pursuing happiness. So leave me alone and let me pursue my happiness. <laughs> that, that's it. I don't, yep. don't want to deal in your life and try to tell you how to live. I don't want to tell you who to worship, who to love. I don't want to tell you what to put in your body. I don't want to try to judge you and act like I'm on some higher moral plane that somehow gets to look down on you for your decisions. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I just want to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's it. <laughs> and I think I represent a heck of a lot of people that feel the same way. So mm -hmm. put that in your pipe and smoke it because we're about done for this today, for this, uh, for this video. <laughs> Guys, pay attention to the stuff that's going on in Virginia. I'm sorry I was long-winded. Okay. I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> But I, yeah, got I've, I've, I've got the I've got the sweet Chick Fil A beat us in me right now, coursing through my veins. Like every time my heart beats, I can just feel ideas popping through my head. So anyway, guys, it's important. Make sure you pay attention to these bills. Hold these people accountable. But remember, I'm gonna catch some flack for saying this. Those Democrats in Virginia, they ain't accountable to you. They're not gonna be. They're, you're you're. Complaints are going to fall on deaf ears because they feel that they are not accountable to you because you didn't vote them in. They're accountable That's to how like Bloomberg. They're accountable to the $2.5 million that Bloomberg put into the campaign, and that's why this exists. So just remember that, that you're not their constituents. Even though all those red areas in Virginia, all those people just living out there trying to live free and just be, be happy, they are not accountable to you in their mind. They're only accountable to the people that voted to them. And that's the wrong answer. Yep. That's not how this works. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you holding on for us here. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. It's all going to be okay. All right, at the end of the day, do you. Live life. Do you. Be you. And uh, it's all going to be all right, okay? Don't let it get to you too bad. But certainly fight it. Certainly voice your concern. But in Virginia's case, don't hold your breath. Get buckled in. It's going to be a long ride. And I hope you guys are ready. So thank you so much for watching. And I uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters uh, who support us here on the channel. Also, folks who purchase uh, Man Cans, which is a monthly mystery box we sell. Also, T-shirts over on Ballistic Ink that we sell. All those funds go right back into supporting these types of videos. And Danny. Hey, Danny. What are you doing, girl? <laughs> that little, little <laughs> nut of a dog. Anyway. Thank you so much. If you, you know, love what we do and you wish to support us, those are the most direct ways to do so. Thank you so much. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.